you were to modify what the retiree health plan was to mere plan two, like the employee um, plan offerings, you would essentially save about the same amount of money as the increased uh, premium costs that are projected for the current retiree health plan. So it would be pretty much a wash. You could wipe out that 16.8% increase by switching to plan two. The impact on uh, recent and future retirees, at least in terms of understanding and utilizing that plan, would be somewhat ne negligible because they'd be familiar with the plan and, and know pretty much what that plan entailed in terms of out-of-pocket expenses. However, I want to point out they would be on a different uh, limited income, and so it would be a larger part of that income. Um, However, for long-term retirees, switching to Plan 2 would definitely be confusing because it, it would be a, a very different setup and a different uh, relationship that that plan would have. And so providing Plan 2 to retirees in 2009 would limit the total premium costs to those paid in 2008 for the current retiree health plan. So you'd essentially be kind of protecting current retirees from increased premium costs, but it would be at the cost of changing that, that uh, plan to plan two. So you've got all the, I'll call them the, the usual suspects here, running down the committees. And so the Retiree Health Benefits Committee recommendation was to maintain the current uh, retiree health plan as it is. The Retirement Board recommendation was the same. The Board Ad Hoc Committee uh, was the same. And CEO and HR recommendation was also the same. The feeling was that um, it, it would save money on the total premium costs, but it would cost more in implementation to individuals and we're not able to quantify what those costs are, and they would not be spread equally among the, the, the users of the system. They would concentrate on the, the largest users of the system. So that particular strategy of modifying the retiree health plan was felt to be not, not a viable option at this time. It, it doesn't mean it can't be looked at in the future, and, uh, but it does mean right now that's, that's not something that anybody was recommending. Okay. Limiting eligibility for retiree health benefits. This would be taking the strategy that was used in 1998 and um, tinkering with it, if you will. You've got an active eligible pool that's around 459, and I believe at this point it's pretty much capped at that. It could go lower if you have people who leave the county and retire from someplace else and don't retire from this county. But to the extent that all of them retire from this county, either by staying here for that length of time or leaving and coming back, then um, they would, uh, that's the number that we're looking at for future retirees. So you could look at limitations that would be applied to people who um, retired at some date in the future. You could either limit their access to it or they could be eligible for a different plan or a different setup or whatever. But, and you can probably come up with any number of permutations. The, the issue with that is that you have a finite pool of people and this would be kind of splitting up that pool even more and it would definitely be making it a whole lot more complicated to administer. And um, so, going through the, the committees here. The Retiree Health Benefits Committee recommended not touching uh, any of the eligibility issues for retiree health benefits. Retirement Board recommendation was the same, do not further limit el eligibility. The Board Ad Hoc Committee was also the same, as was the CEO and HR recommendation. The, the general consensus is that adding complexity to a finite system is not an effective strategy in this case. That leaves us with the third uh, strategy, and that is increasing retiree contributions towards premium costs, or in general, in increasing revenues that can help fund the retirement health system. And it's both specifying and limiting the retirement system's contribution to retiree health benefits. 
and it moves towards what people call a defined contribution plan, but it is not a true defined contribution plan. A defined contribution would be where the retirement system, the county, say this much is what's going to be contributed towards retiree health benefits, and that's it. So you could set a, a, a figure of $510 or something and say, this is all that's going to be con contributed. Anything beyond that is borne by the retiree, the retirees, uh, and their family. So um, we're not going to a defined contribution plan at this point, but that is a lot of what's being discussed statewide. And at one point, there was even interest on some parties of doing some kind of a, a statewide proposal, ballot initiative, that would require that public retirement systems, and this was actually not just health, it was for retirement itself, go to defined contribution systems. And some counties are looking at that. I'm not aware of a wholesale shift uh, in the state, but it's certainly out there as a consideration, both for retirement systems as well as retiree health. And in the staff report, I kind of itemized the number of different um, options that were looked at because, as I said, this has been discussed for about two years now, and a lot of work was done at the Retiree Health Benefits Committee level and um, secondarily at the Retirement Board level. So.